demonic warfare going on. Not, not just in the inner city, not just in the tribe here, but throughout the world. And uh, I feel like today God is going to release his Shekinah glory in a way that we've never felt before. I felt the manifestation as I was praying today, as I was getting my heart prepared. So we're going to have children's service and everything, but I feel like we all need to witness the moment that God is going to release his Shekinah glory, the, the glory from heaven to anoint us. You know, his word is very clear that when we resist the enemy, when we resist the devil, he must flee. And, and even if we have the faith as small as a mustard seed, that, that as we believe as small as we can, that, that as we decree, as we prophesy over our homes that the evil demonic forces flee, they must flee in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Son of Man, the Son of God, the one who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He was with Father Daddy the whole time. Amen. So today I'm going to call up an altar call and I'm going to have a special anointing for the men over the households here today as well. But, but we want to come against every demonic force that is trying to invade homes and families, to bring terror. I learned in this spiritual experience over those, this weekend that God revealed that even the myths that are man-made, that these spirits will feed on to instill greater fear in our families. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, these myths be rendered useless in Jesus' mighty name and that the walls of salvation will rise around our homes and that the authority spoken in the name of Jesus will reign. Love will prevail in our households. Amen. So I just, look, we've got good news and that is that Jesus has authority. His name has authority. Not Pastor Kevin Quail Child Rodriguez, but the name of Jesus has authority and I want everyone to believe in that name even the children you feel something wrong and demonic you feel something evil lurking children you have faith as well you have belief as well you can cast that thing out in Jesus mighty name amen and I pray the release of God's peace his Shekinah glory, amen. So right now, if you felt touched by the Holy Spirit, I want to pray with us. Come to the altar. I've prayed in Jesus' mighty name that this altar right here is set ablaze. And look, we're living sacrifices. Come, line up right here in Jesus' mighty name. We're going to pray the release of God's glory. We're going to pray for peace, amen. We're going to pray for the authority that when we speak the name of Jesus, we must believe. That darkness will flee in Jesus' name. Devils will flee in Jesus' name. And peace will reign and be our governor in our household. Bow your heads, close your eyes with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, I thank you for the living sacrifice here represented today. And at the altar, as it is set ablaze in Jesus' mighty name, that, Lord, your peace will reign in our households, O oh God. Father, we want your peace, oh God. I'm tired of... We would humble ourselves, cry out to you and repent and call on you in heaven that you would hear from heaven your children, oh God, and heal our lands, Lord. I'm trusting and believing here today that your Shekinah glory set our hearts at peace, oh Lord. May, the, may your, your, your peace and your love radiate even from this household here today, Lord. Your church here today. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your glory. We thank you for the authority in Jesus' name. We thank you that when we have faith, oh God, that we can cast devils out in Jesus' name. Evil spirits out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So right now, Father, I pray a tenfold blessing upon all those who came by faith to your altar, oh God. That, Lord, your Shekinah glory, the fire from heaven will refine us here today. 
Renew in us a pure and clean heart and a spirit, oh God, that is unwavering. That, Lord, we would believe that we believe and that we trust and that we know that we know that we know that in your name, devils and demons and darkness and evil myths feeding spirits will flee in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way in this place, oh God. Fulfill our hearts, oh Lord. Open our hearts. Lord, you've already told me, oh God, that the land, the soil is rich. Father, we lay the seeds of life here today. We pray that your Holy Spirit germinated and that the authority from God, from heaven, oh Lord, in Jesus' name, that Lord, as we speak from the kingdom and from the heart of your children, Lord, we are heirs of your kingdom, oh God. We are children of the Most High God. That as we speak the release of, of, of rejecting evil, oh God, it will flee in Jesus' mighty name. And peace will reign in our lives and in our souls and in our households. Yes. Right now, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I anoint the man of the house here. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Lord, we pray a special prayer a special anointing upon my brother here in Jesus' mighty name, that he will be the priestly figure in his home, oh God, that he would uphold your, your word, oh Lord, rejecting evil when it's smelt, when it's felt. Hallelujah. That it won't have a foothold. It won't even, if the, they try to open up in the crack of the door, that he would discern it in Jesus' mighty name, that his children and his wife would discern it his mother-in-law would discern it immediately. But I pray that, Father, you would have a, a great anointing. Oh God. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for the blood. We plead the blood over his household, oh God. We pray that every demonic evil spirit would flee, oh Lord. That as we just say your name, oh God. And that his house would be marked forever with your holiness. And that the death angel would flee and walk right over past it. We know that you, you're, the evil spirits are roaming and they collect and they try to gather and, and, and afflict all kinds. You may be seated, amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Had to release that this morning. I had to be obedient to the Holy Spirit, amen. The great spirit, hallelujah. Look, I know this, dear families, I know this. There is a stirring right now in the spirit realm. Thank you, Holy Spirit, there's a stirring. But let not the wickedness intimidate you. You know, whenever something is seemingly overwhelming, it's about that moment that God works best to magnify his glory in dark spaces, amen? amen. And uh, so this stirring, I believe that in Jesus' name that there's going to be uh, chains of addiction broken, amen? I believe that there's going to be uh, chains broken that have thoughts of suicide. We know that the death angel has been roaming around and, and causing havoc and scattering from here and there and, and infiltrating homes and trying to bring terror and all that, manifesting and trying to show up as if it's, it's all that in a bag of chips, but it's not, amen? Because we have authority in Jesus' name. So I just want to thank God again that, that in this time, in this hour, when the soil is so rich, and this is the Hebraic year, 5782, that when, when, when the, the words that were manifesting through me as an, a, an elder of this tribe was anointing me in the spirit, I was already in the spirit. But as she would begin to blow the wind of life from the Holy Ghost, <laughs> she would begin to uh, blow over me, <sighs> anointing me. That was prophesied even in my spirit years ago that that was going to happen on the very first tent meeting. We did not plan for it. It just manifested. 
but the words release, release, release. And then a prophet and an apostle from uh, Navajo nations in Shiprock, New Mexico, said, Brother Kevin, I want you to understand. not by uh, uh, happenstance, right? It was real. And then so it is not, uh, it is not by chance that we're here today where God is going to begin to release in Jesus' name we are in an, a very enriched uh, environment, atmosphere, that when we believe in the name of Jesus, that we would even intercede for those who don't. Amen. Yeah. To be a blessing and an intercessor for them. Yeah. Amen. You have the anointing and the spirit in us. Once that's activated, Jesus says, greater things shall you do when I go to be with the Father. It is the counselor in us, the activation of the Holy Ghost. I've seen miracles even just this week. I've seen miracles all this year. And see, that's what God wants to do. He says, my church will be built upon the rock and evil will not prevail against it. So if you believe that here with me today, just thank God one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Look, we are going to be getting into another, uh, the second part of the message, but we're going to pray for the youth ministry here today because they have a fun activity in learning. Amen. So we want to go ahead and pray for them. Children, if I could have you stand, please. I would like to pray for you. And uh, moms, dads, sisters, brothers, cousins, uncles, whatever, <laughs> just, just, just point. Your, your hands in agreement with me towards the children here today as we pray. Lord, we thank you for our children. Your word is very clear. It says, hinder not my children to come to Jesus. Lord, we, we just pray that, Lord, no, no, no dark obstacle, no dark blockage would, would interfere with, with our in a way that we just, we would know that we know that we know that what word is being spoken here today is truth. And uh, Lord, we just are careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So uh, children, teachers, you are dismissed. Hallelujah. Have fun, have fun, have fun. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we want to pray in for the word here today. Um, before we pray in for the word, though, you know, we had yet another mass shooting take place uh, this week. I believe Uvalde, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Uvalde, Texas. As I understand it, 19 children lost their lives because of this massacre, and I believe two, two adults uh, at the school as well. So I want to pray. I can't imagine what they're going through, but I want us to pray as we get into and prepare our hearts today. I just feel like I would be doing the body of Christ a disservice you know, pastorally, if I, if I didn't encourage us to pray and intercede for that, that dramatic, uh, painful situation. So uh, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word. It is truly a lamp unto our, our feet. But Father, we need peace over the families. They, they're
this week. Lord, hatred is, is just not of you. Our thoughts are not your thoughts. Our ways are not your ways, O oh Lord. You are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could even ask or comprehend. Think of, O oh Lord. So, Father God, by the grace of your kingdom, by the grace of God, we pray that your peace that surpasses all human understanding invade the hearts of those who are mourning for those beautiful children, O oh God. We pray that you would be there to comfort them, that they would feel your presence as they mourn in this season, Lord. And we just pray that for the teachers that have had to go back to uh, school, when they go back to school, Lord, that, that, that fear will not be their portion, but love, power, and a sound mind, Father, because we pray that, Lord, we fight against darkness with love, that your love would prepare would prevail. Your love is the antidote in this season, oh God. That we would so let our light shine, Lord. So we just pray your light over that region, that community. But Father, we want to address every community where the thoughts are being um, manifested in the minds. And we want to pray against those demonic spirits that, Lord, the evil forces, oh Lord, would be overwhelmed by your, your angels of heaven, oh God, and by the prayers of your saints here on this earth, oh Lord. We pray for the communities of Texas, but all communities throughout the United States, and we pray for Ukraine. We pray where all these rumors of wars are happening, oh God. We pray that there's a relenting. There is a holding back of the perpetuation of evil. So Lord, we just pray here today, Lord, against all evil demonic forces. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father God, I pray that you give us ears to hear what your spirit says and shift us now, God, to your glory, to your word here today. Encourage us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go ahead and, and pray now for the word here today. We're going to uh, go into the book of Isaiah, <clears throat> chapter 55. We're going to read from verses 6 through 11. Today's, um, today's message, amen, is tailored around a bird that I have learned from. Last week I shared, you know, how I learned these many years from, from observing the bird quail. And how much over my lifetime, over the span, how much this bird has taught me the character, the many good characters and quality of God Almighty. Amen. God loves all that he has created. Amen. So, so he, will, he has a way of using what he has created to show his glory, to show his character. In a time that, that evil wants to persuade us to have evil character, we want to know the character of God that pleases him. I want to be more like Christ myself. So I have to understand the character of God to do that. And how beautiful God would use this bird, quail. Amen. And we're going to go over 12 characters. Last week we went over four. Today we'll go over another four. But uh, we're going to go into the scripture that, that speaks of God's beautiful qualities and his character for us. His children, his most prized uh, creation. Amen. So uh, Isaiah 55, uh, verses 6 through 11. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord reads, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the righteous their thoughts, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For my thoughts, for my thoughts <clears throat> are not your thoughts, neither are, my, or neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. 
as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Thank you, Jesus. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and declare the purpose for which I sent it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today, Father. Anoint these lips of clay. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the altar that you have ablaze here today, Father. We pray that, Lord, out of our living sacrifice, as we are here gathered in your name, and when we gather in your name and multiples, you are in our midst. And as we praise your holy name, you inhabit the praise of your people here today, Father. May your Holy Spirit manifest so that, Lord, we understand your character more deeply. Father, we pray that your character will invade us. Help to adjust our, uh, our, our, our character that is out of line. Father, I'm speaking to myself first. Lord, adjust me to be more like your son, Jesus Christ, and less like the evil in the world. Here today, Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit take full control of this place. Nothing that manifests here, Lord, do we glory in the flesh. But, Father, we deflect all our praise, all our worship to you in heaven in spirit. Holy Spirit, take full control. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. So let's do a quick recap. saw last week was loyalty right that was the first one that God spoke into my spirit loyalty and you think of loyalty loyalty is about a togetherness it's about a commitment that we have for one another and when you think about this right this quail unless it is uh, unless it is 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 stirred up and, and scattered because of danger right this the quail love to gather together they love to gather together and and for the body of Christ a godly character, right? Jesus says, look, you are now my children. We are his hires for the kingdom, right? This is a togetherness. Amen. We want people to uh, know and come into the grace of God like we know it in spirit. And there's a togetherness and a commitment that we have and a loyalty to the body of Christ, a loyalty to God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. That, 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 that we can learn and glean from, from this from this bird. The second thing that God spoke into my spirit, a godly characteristic, is that, that the, the, the quail are led by a leader, right? The, the rest of the covey don't go nowhere. The, the quail is willing to lay its life, the, the head quail, the leader quail, is willing to lay its life down for the other quails. That it will put itself first into danger if it's around for the other quail. Jesus says there's no uh, greater honor than this that a man or a woman be willing to lay down their life for a fellow friend, brother, sister. Amen. And that quail, that leader quail represents willing to lay its life down for the for the presence. came from the Father. God made fully flesh dwelt among us on this earth. But he was the perfect living sacrifice for us. He was the greatest leader that we could ask for, the most, most uh, uh, willing, right? He came to save us, not to condemn us. Amen. He came to save us, but that he was going to have to lay down his life. He was a, he's our great leader. I'm a disciple of Jesus. Amen. These quail have that same characteristic. They are, they are led by a leader willing to risk its own life for the safety of the others. Amen. Hallelujah. And the third thing that we learned that God spoke into my spirit that day is that, that the quail, they sing like a heavenly mass choir. You ever notice that quail just have a beautiful sound about them? Right? They have many different sounds. 
But when they're just collected, when you are lucky enough <laughs> to, to just witness them, they're eating and they're just congregating together, they have this beautiful sound that, that it's, it's so harmonious, right? That day when I was walking as my foot stepped on the, the mountain, right at the base of the mountain, I heard the quail out there, and God immediately began to speak to me. But as he would say that they, they, they represent the heavenly mass choir. And we know that in heaven, the angels of heaven, those in the multitudes of white robes, they're there praising and extolling the name of the Lord. Amen. King David, who was a man after God's own heart, screwed up like me from the toe to the head. Hallelujah. He knew... He knew the tool repentance, amen? We got to repent our way into heaven. But it's a tool. God knows we ain't perfect, but, but David would sing songs. We got the whole book of Psalms, amen? Because it extols, it, it, it promotes God's glory. And when you, whether you're sad in singing or happy in singing, when we sing to the Lord, especially in They can just sing, they can just sing, and, and it's so loud when you get close. And you got like, I've been around like 75, 100 of these things at one time. And they didn't even know that I was there, and I was just observing. My, my grandfather lived, uh, they still have the property, my aunt still has the property there in Black Canyon City. But as a child, I got to walk across the street, and I used to embed myself in a, in a bush. And, and the quail, the covey would just run right through and I would just be there watching. I, I never knew I, why I was so fascinated with this bird, but, but I would just watch and all the beautiful colors and, and as the light would come through the branches, the little openings and, and there was a different glow to the colors. It was almost like there was a reflection. But then they, they would stop and, and, and all together just start singing and, and so beautifully, amen? That's a wonderful wonderful godly characteristic and even jesus with his disciples sung hymns hallelujah when god does something good <laughs> when we saw a miracle this week we couldn't help but just right there in the middle of the living room just start giving god praise that's a godly characteristic even our ancestors did that amen praise and extolling the name of creator hallelujah thank you jesus this bird does the same thing amen hallelujah the fourth thing that we learn is that this bird thrives and lives in thorny areas where cactus and thorns are all around. You know, the quail have protection in that environment, but we have protection with the name of Jesus in our environment. We're around a lot of thorns of evil, inflictions that want to come and, and, and perpetuate their way in our lives. But the name of Jesus gives us safety, brings us peace. Amen. It's a godly characteristic. Even a thorn, it, it, it represents the potential of being distracted. You get stuck with a thorn. It don't feel good, right? It, it starts to hurt. And, and uh, you know, our dogs are big wild animals that try to get the quail. They can't, they can't maneuver as, as the, the, the quail are so small and agile and able to. They're designed for that. They, they burrow. They, they go into cactus and they have little nesting areas for their quail the baby quail, and the cactus. Big old mountain lion trying to come through there, they're going to get stuck, their paws are going to get stuck with thorns. It's, it's going to distract them, it's going to flee. That bird is designed to live in areas that to us is seemingly dangerous, but for them it's safety. The world represents a lot of dangerous things for us, but with the name of Jesus we have safety, amen? So that's just a quick recap, amen. Thank you, Lord. Quick recap of what we talked about today we talk of another four characteristics amen and uh, the next time we congregate we'll finish up this series with the last four that God put on my heart on that day amen hallelujah thank you Jesus so number five and I'm telling you in what would you call that? Uh, not to get big word, um, 
chronological order, meaning in sequence, right? Step one, step two, that kind of thing, right? So, so in, in, in order that God put it in my heart, this is number five. Number five, God spoke to me that this bird is a humble bird. It's interesting. The word of God says that, that the poor in spirit, this doesn't mean monetary poor, okay? The poor in spirit means a low position, a low, humble position. Blessed are those, the word of God says, that are poor in spirit. Poor meaning that, that, that when I get down on my knees and I decrease that my creator may increase, this is a low position. This is the most low position I can be in reverence to God. Amen? That as I get down on my knees in prayer where God fights most of our battles, hello somebody, that it is in this low, poor position that we are nothing without God and that we are humble. We don't think of ourselves better than anybody else, right? This is a humility. This bird prefers to run. <laughs> if it's in danger, it prefers to run. But if it has to fly, it flies also in low position. And it flies extremely fast. And it'll scare the heebie-jeebies out of you, amen? If you accidentally come across this bird and you just walk across, you know, and it, and it goes like that, and you're only feet away from it, their wings are so powerful that they, that they have this clapping machine gun sound. But they are a low position bird. This represents the godly characteristic of humility. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Humility. Humility is so important in our lives. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and get into some scripture here that talks about humility and the importance of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Is that just the wind? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sandra, you want to close it? Can you close the door? There it goes. It goes back. It's going back. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, humility. 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 We're going to go to the book of John, chapter 4. We're going to read from verses uh, 7 through 26. The book of John, which is the fourth. From verses 7 through 26. As he was from the journey, sat down by the well, it was about noon. I want to pause real quick. You know, Jesus came fully flesh, right? Incarnate of the Father in heaven, fully human yet fully divine. Everything that we felt from a human standpoint, as God has created us, he felt as well. We get tired, Jesus got tired as well. We get thirsty. Jesus got thirsty too. Amen? We get hungry, Jesus got hungry too. Amen? So this is painting a picture. You know, sometimes we think, oh, well, he just had this greatest advantage. But let me tell you something. Jesus was the DNA of King David. DNA of King David represents the flesh that wrapped the holy bones of Jesus. It was prophesied even in the Old Testament that Jesus, the Messiah, was going to be from the lineage of David. Amen? But here's what I want you to understand. Like David, right, Jesus was wrapped with the flesh, the DNA of King David, who battled, who battled adultery, who battled, you know, we would call it sex addiction today. He was screwed up, but he knew the power of repentance. Amen? We have, we ain't perfect. Hello, somebody. But Jesus, 
the battle that Jesus felt. We can't, we can't deny the Christ. We can't deny and say, oh, well, he just had an advantage because he came from heaven. No. He felt the most extreme battle that even Apostle Paul talks about. Of the, the, the flesh is our selfish desires. Hello, somebody. Our self, we all have them, if we're honest. We got a thorn in our flesh, just like Apostle Paul says. We all have it. So, so Jesus wrapped with this selfish flesh of King David. Before he ever was launched into his ministry, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And would now, when he goes to be with the Father, is now the generator. But my point is this. He had the most, we do too, the most holy, great spirit living in us. We are a temple. So Jesus had this battle more than anybody. And when he was fasting for 40 days, the first thing that the enemy tried to do is test him with the very thing that his physical body was craving, and that was food. Forty days without food. Forty days without food. On the third day, for me, I am craving a steak like nobody's business. And my flesh, <laughs> hello somebody, you know, but he did it 40 days. He was battling, battling the flesh. He felt and it was tempted with everything that you and I feel and are tempted with. Amen. But he came from glory. He humbled himself, came from glory to be our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us continue here. <clears throat> when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. Real quick. This was unusual. Jesus was a Jew. The Jews had a religious spirit about them. The Jews, all their life, oh, I'm God's chosen, I'm God's chosen. God was always trying to get to the heart. He had to preserve a remnant at one point in time. And that was the purpose. I got to get a hold of this. This world is so screwed up. I need my law. I need to have some uh, uh, consequences to folk who, who are going to screw up around here, right? Wreak havoc in the community. That's what, you know, it came from the Bible. Every community has a way of containing the, 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 the bad that is perpetuated by us, right? If I screw up and I'm, you know, I'm acting a fool and I'm causing harm to people, I get locked up, right? There's a purpose for that. There's a purpose for that. Sure there is, right? But, but Jesus shatters here in this example uh, this religious spirit. My, my people are better than your people. That supremacy spirit, it's ancient. It roams around. Yes, it does. But Jesus shatters it right here. Amen? Here's a Samaritan woman. She is a Gentile. Looked down upon by the Jews. But not by Jesus. Hallelujah. When we talk about one blood, <laughs> when we talk about one blood, there's a reason for this one blood. Blood brings my body life as much as it does anybody else. It is in the blood that life gives us pumps life into us. Amen. And a black man's blood is just as good for this, uh, uh, what would I call myself, a, a, a mutt white boy here. <laughs> His blood is just good for me, me and mine for him. If they're a match, you know, if whatever that match thing is called, you know, if it's a match, it's a match. One blood. Jesus shatters, shatters racism, shatters, you know, this exalting of another race above another. Amen. Hallelujah. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? See, she's thinking, my goodness, how can you even ask me? You know, she's, she's under the impression, you're much better than me. You're, you're, you're too good for me, right? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. That was then. <laughs> Somebody say, that was then. <laughs> There's a new covenant now. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a new covenant. Jesus answered her, 
If you know the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. <laughs> Amen. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? <laughs> Jesus sparks interest in us. Amen. As he should. <laughs> Because he's a good God. Amen. Are you greater than our father Jacob? This is ancestry, right? Even God the Father in heaven, he speaks of ancestry. Why do we speak of it? Why did our ancestors speak of their ancestors and we speak of them now? It's because God is a relational God. Creator is a relational God. He is the creator of Isaac, Jacob, and Israel. Amen. That is, an, that is a relational God. Hallelujah. Some, some, ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit hug. People are getting this twisted, y'all. <laughs> People are getting this twisted. They're teaching it wrong. But I'm here to tell you, our God that we serve is a relational God. Amen. And our forefathers, right, those who were about God's business, even in the Old Testament, they were God-fearing. That's why our ancestors are referred to as that. They're our forefathers because they were God-fearing. Amen. We don't put our ancestors above God, no. But we remember them, we honor them under the Lordship of Christ Jesus. Amen. Nothing wrong with that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so are you greater? Who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? <laughs> Jesus replied here, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. Amen. He's God. But I can't say that it that happened that way with me. The word of God says faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. It's a progression. As you read the word of God in spirit, thank you Holy Spirit, hug, as you consume it, as you drink it, as you, as you eat it, right? Your faith grows yes. in the unseen realm. You believe in a God that ain't even seen more than everything that is seen. Hello somebody. <laughs> And when he starts to manifest his glory and as he starts to bring miracles, you can't help but peel your hands back and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water. Verse uh, 16, he told her, go call your husband and come back. Listen to this, this is a setup right here. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right. You are right. You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, now, Jesus is doing something. He's given her a word of knowledge. You know, this is a spiritual gift for you and me, too. God will give you a word of knowledge about something. Not, not to gloat about yourself, not to get paid for your gift, but to be a blessing for somebody, to help them even turn from their unrighteousness. When we do that with others, right, it helps to cover over a multitude of sin. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you are right when you say that, he says. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews claim that the place where we worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus here, 21. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Ye at a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, I, as we're talking about this beautiful gift, humility, right? Jesus was so humble that, that he was asking, even though he was looked at as, as a Jew, not as Jesus. She didn't know that it was Jesus, right? She, did, she didn't know that it was the Messiah when, she, when he first asked for the drink. She didn't know. But, but he needed something, and he was humble enough out of his need to ask a Gentile that was prohibited 
in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. Oh, we're better than you. My people, the Jews, the God's chosen. Jesus is saying here, now that you worship in spirit, right? God's favor is for the Jews and the Gentiles. Amen. We're Gentiles in here today. And we have the favor of God when we worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Jesus, the great, the, the one willing and did lay his life for all of us that, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life is now speaking to a woman that is looking up at him as if he was greater and better than she was. But humbled, Jesus humbled himself and says, I need water too. I'm thirsty. Please give me a drink. Amen. Jesus shattered what many of us are, are sometimes not even willing to do ourselves. And yet, it's written. Amen. And if we want to be more like Christ and less like the evil in the world, hello, we got to take upon that character and say, Lord, help me with this character. Humility is a good thing. Humility is a good thing. <clears throat> the Lord spoke to me several years back that a greater anointing was coming. And he said that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are directly connected. They're directly connected and tied to our humility. So if we start losing humility, right, if our humility starts to be lesser and lesser, which is supposed to be greater and greater as we honor and worship the Lord, that we will lose the effectiveness of God's glorious working power, not by might, not by our own strength, but by his spirit, the word says, by his spirit. If we start losing our humility, the effectiveness of the Christ can't operate through us as a, as a, as a, as a vessel that has been sanctified wholly to him. Not that you're perfect. It just means that we, we understand the tools that we have in our arsenary. We, we understand the tools in our toolbox. We got to use them. That means even when we screw up, we got to use those tools. That's part of our humility. And so when I know that I come and fall short, even as a minister, when I come and fall short, I got to do the same thing. I got to practice what I preach. Amen. Because if I don't, thank you, Holy Spirit, hug. If I don't do that, I'm losing my humility because I'm starting to think of myself too high. And trust me, a lot of people start out in the ministry that way. They were humble before the Lord. They saw many miracles, prophesying, and things coming to pass to edify. Did it in all humility. But then money started to come in. I've been tempted with money, even in the church. But I said, oh no, you ain't going to do that. God called me to this ministry. And I'm going to do it. Whether I'm preaching to one person or a thousand people, I don't care. But when I do do it, I'm going to do it as I'm doing it unto the Lord. And I'm not going to be uh, swayed here. I work a job just like anybody else. I work a nine to five like anybody else. And I work for the money I get. I don't get it from the ministry. Most of, my, most of my money that we can give away, it's either going to other ministries or ours that God has ordained us to. Amen. But I'm like Apostle Paul and John. They had, they had their traits. Jesus was a, a carpenter. John was a, was a, was a, was a, was a uh, medical physician. He worked, yet did the ministry. That's what Jesus did too. He worked for his keep. He was a humble servant. Amen. It, but, but, but God is going to be manifesting his gifts. Discernment in the name of Jesus, brother. Discernment. So that, the, the, that, that we can discern the evil spirit. We'll, we'll know it by its root and curse it to its root. In Jesus' name. That it won't return. We'll be closing portals. Yeah, it's going to be roaming until, until consummation. Until all that is judged, bad and good. We got to deal with evil spirits. And the closer we get to God, sometimes the warfare is even greater. Temptation can get even greater. 
but greater is he who is in me, amen, somebody, than he who is in the world, the prince of the air. That's the devil, Satan. Jesus will get us through, amen. amen. But God, Jesus, was a perfect example of a humble person. Here he is asking a Gentile, a Jew, asking a Gentile for a glass of water. That was humble. That was humble. Amen. I'm asking out of my needs. Sometimes we have needs and we're so scared to ask for, brother, will you help me? <laughs> it's a godly thing to do. Can, can, can you help me? I got I got all this. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Can, you know, that song, Lean On Me. There's, there's a reason why we got that song. Beautiful song. Lean on me, right? Because <laughs> sometimes we're weak. <laughs> we still believe in God, but sometimes we feel weak in our spirits. Sometimes we just ask, Lord, I need your strength. Humble yourself. Ask for it. Jesus says that you, you have not because you ask not. <laughs> it ain't contingent because you're a Jew or a Gentile now. We're under a new covenant. Thank you, Jesus. When we have a need, we ask for it, and he will provide. Jesus says, anything that you ask in my name with a good heart, anything you ask in my name, I will give it to you, the desires of your heart. But it has to be good desires, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Real quick, on humility, I had a student absolutely bring me to tears. In, in the youth ministry that I was pastoring <clears throat> at a Vietnamese church years ago. And this, this sister of mine, and we're talking about humility. And, and she said something that just brought me to tears right there in that little circle with the kids. Kids minister to us, amen? They do. When you keep your eyes open, kids minister to us. Their faith is so precious, so precious. But she said to me, Pastor Kevin, I never want to think of myself better than anybody else. She knew that the potential was there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Like she knew the potential was there. People do it all the time. I think she knew that it was even going to be tempted. She was going to be tempted one day. This was a girl that I, I, even though she didn't believe, her daddy was a pastor too. He was one of, my, he was a sidekick with me in the, in the ministry. And Mama too, just, they are big time worshipers. But the daughter said, you know, willing, you know, with a willing heart and honesty. Honesty is good, no matter what condition you think that you are in. An honest heart is good, whether you believe or not. An honest heart, the spirit of willingness, Jesus Christ himself, he'll act on that. I mean, you lie about something, you won't act on that. But if you're an unbeliever and you, you got a willing heart and you say, you know, I'm, I don't believe, and he loves that honesty, because he'll heal it when you're honest. But she said that, and, and she was she was one that was just such an unbeliever, skeptical. The spirit of skepticism was upon her so so deeply, and I, I would I would go to my secret place and pray for her miracle. We had a homeless outreach one time, and we had the youth singing at the outreach at a homeless ministry that I was invited to speak at at the time. When I called the altar call, I had a, just a short message, and then we spent time at the altar together. Amen. She was the first. She was the first one at the altar weeping before the Lord. My wife, I didn't even recognize, but my wife would nudge me and say, "And I love I just, I'm broken. I was on my knees too, just glorifying the Lord. Humility. Humility." That's one of the greatest characteristics of God. This bird teaches us a low, poor spirit. And blessed are those who are poor in spirit, the word of God promises us. It's not, it's not contingent on anything. But when we preserve humility, we are blessed. Amen. Come on, let's give God a great hand. Clap of we are blessed. We are blessed. Number six. Quail know when to be still. Ooh. <laughs> can we learn from that, church? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. See, quail are discerning. They understand when bad is present. When, when, when they know when danger lurks.
guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Nail me on the cross, Lord. I'm, I'm carrying the cross right now. Look, I'm guilty of it. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm first preaching to myself. But, but we want to act out an emotion. And then we regret what we say. And sometimes the consequence that we receive from what we say has a, a, an impact for a period of time. You hurt someone's feelings. It can take them a while to heal. When you could have just been quiet and said, maybe I'm getting this situation wrong, Lord. I put it in your hands right now, right? And especially when the Holy Spirit is activated in you, when you don't grieve him, he's going he's gonna to remind you, daughter, uh, keep your mouth shut. Keep it shut because I know better for you. When the leader quail says, keep your mouth shut to the rest of the quail, they keep their mouth shut. They don't because the leader knows for what's in best interest because he's probably at a different vantage. He, he might be at a top of a cactus speaking to them at the, the and, and, it, and it means something to them. Stay still. Stay still. Maybe there's a bobcat lurking or something like that. Stay still. We need to learn this quality too. And just let God be God. Sometimes he's the one that fights our battles. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, sometimes he'll paint a picture. He'll even have you prepare for something great. And by the time you step foot in that place that he wants you to deal with, sometimes he just wanted to test you. I'm speaking to someone today. Sometimes he's just wanting to test you if you'd be willing to do what he showed you to do but it's already resolved by the time you get there. And I have seen this happen over and over and over in the ministry. Amen? This is a very important thing. Learn to keep your mouth shut, to be still, and to wait on the Lord. This bird teaches us this beautiful quality and character. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to go to the book of Psalms now. We're going to go to Psalm uh, chapter 46. <clears throat> Psalm chapter 46. And we're going to read from verses 7 through 11. And the word of the Lord reads, <clears throat> The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Here again, speaking of the ancestors, right? God himself. He's a relational God. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease. When we get on our knees and we pray in spirit for the warfare, not just not what we see advancing in the physical, there's another war reigning loud. It always manifests in the unseen before it comes physical. Remember that. So when we're on our knees and making petitions to the Lord, oh Lord, touch my husband because he is acting up today. I'm here preaching before you because of prayers of my wife. And I believe that with all my heart and soul. Because I was a knucklehead. Amen. It was her prayers. It was her prayers that got me here. Yes, I see some smiles because you knew me in that wicked demonic time of my life. Amen. But he's here to fight our wars and battles. We got to believe it. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Amen. He says, be still and know that I am God. Be still. Be still. Sometimes we just need to be still and he'll work it out. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen, Lord.
warning, right? When, when the Holy Spirit is in us and he's saying, act, go, to, go over here. There's something over there that, that he wants to heal. There's something. If we don't do that, we're, we're, we're being irresponsible of a blessing for somebody else. Remember, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And when he's given us a word of knowledge, when he's provoking our heart, when he's even given us a word of prophecy, and we're prophesying over somebody's life because the Spirit of the Lord is speaking through you. And you know that you know it's going to come to pass. And you speak that thing. It is to help others. So just a real quick warning on that, right? Yes, we be still when we know to be still. God will tell us, be still. Keep your mouth shut right now. You're about to go off on your boss. Hello, somebody. I've been there many times. And I've made that mistake many times. Amen. But when the Spirit of the Lord was active in me, he was my reminder. Keep your mouth shut, shut, son. Pray on it right now. I'll show you the words. And when you reconcile back in that meeting, I'm going to bring a glory. And I've seen that in customers' uh, meetings before. We were about to go before wolves. And they, were all, they, they just wanted to beat us up. And we pray that God would bring the glory. But see, sometimes we just got to be still. So that he may be trying to give us wisdom in that still place. Right? Just like Jonah, he ran away from God. But the belly of the well, he, he, he had to die of his flesh. And, and God was dealing with him. Here's a prophet of God running away from God, being disobedient to God. But by the time God got a hold of him, slapped him upside his face and said, you need to wake up, boy. He had to wake up because the blessing that he would begin as he would obey the pagans that were there upon that boat started to believe in the one who settled the storm. You got to go off this boat. You got to enter into the water. You got to let this fish get you. You have to die of your flesh, right? Don't run away from God, but listen to him. And as long as we use the tools of God's grace, hallelujah. Look, it's not fire and brimstone. We have no business condemning people Okay, I don't care how loud you preach and teach. We have no business saying somebody's going to go to hell. We are not the Avenger. There's only one. Right? Let's be humble and realize our place. We stay in our lane. And see, the, this bird represents that too. They stay in their lane. They know what their capabilities are and they know when to be still. Because something is lurking out there that could, that could harm them, that could disperse their, their, their community, so to speak. When you have a dispersed community and, and the leader is, is taken out, right? The hunter's, the hunter's uh, aim is always first to the leader. Not, not just when you're going to hunt quail because they taste delicious. But, but when war comes, you want to understand the strategy of your enemy. You take the leader out and it brings confusion. This bird wants to preserve harmony. This bird wants to, So when it needs to stay still, it stays still. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ah, number seven. This is a beautiful characteristic. Beautiful. But these quail are adopting. They have an adopting spirit about them. There are many coveys out there in the wild. And when they are dispersed, maybe a hunter came through and they scattered because, you know, they were shooting with shotguns and it scared them and they, they scattered. Or maybe it's a light mountain lion. They just happened to find him in a good place and he got a couple. And the covey scatters. They don't collect right away. But when they do, it may be from a predominantly different covey, a different quail group from, from, from the east side maybe, maybe, right? But because they recognize each other, by their characteristics, their physical characteristics, and by the, 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 their communication, the way they talk, they adopt them in. <laughs> Amen. That's a beautiful characteristic. Jesus says, I leave the 99 to go find that one lost sheep. I bring them back to the herd. And when that one comes back, we have the angelic hosts in heaven praising and worshiping the Lord because we found the one who was lost. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes we gotta, we got to go after lost people sometimes. But when we do, his glory is there. You know, we got to be willing to act on that. But that, that's an adopting spirit. I saw a beautiful story come up on Facebook not too long ago 
Right, I'm learning. I learn. I learn a lot. I got a learning spirit. Thank you, Lord, for a learning spirit. I'm not a know-it-all. But I want to learn and know as much as I possibly can because knowledge is power. It truly is. It's power. But I learned about some of our ancestors, how the Native American people had an adopting spirit about them. Even, even the black folks that were scattered because they were running from their slave masters. Native people have gathered them hundreds of years ago. You have today some tribes that look predominantly black and they are all about the business of the creator of heaven and earth and all about their community. But that is beautiful in the midst of wickedness and evil being perpetuated that a community would come together and say, come here little baby, uh, runaway boy, I got you. God loves it. That's, that's the greatest charity that we could do is to adopt somebody that ain't even yours and, and be just as good of a father to them as your own blood children. So whenever somebody adopts somebody, it is the I don't care how screwed up we think the parents might be. Hello, somebody. We, we, we know the thoughts that come into our mind. But when they do that, it is selfless. It is an adopting characteristic that this quail has. It is willing to take the lost quail into its covey as its own. Jesus is that for us too. Amen. When I screw up and I backslide, when I was in the middle, you know, uh, getting right before the Lord, crying at the altar for two years, every time. I humble myself to remain compassionate for those in the world who are lost, who, who need encouragement. I don't care what their beliefs are. Love them. And you don't even have, man, we, we, got, we don't have to force feed Jesus. When they feel the spirit of the living God, when the light shines, the Lord says, let your light so shine. You know, the kids sing that song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That comes from let your light shine. Amen. Let, the, let your character, let your actions on loving people speak for themselves. Oh, I'm a God. I'm, you're going to go to hell if you don't. No, man. That, that's destruction. That ain't going to encourage nobody. But if someone's down in the dumps and say, hey, most people, even if they're non-believers, they'll accept prayer. Yes, please pray for me. And when you pray and something manifests in the glory of God, you give God the glory. Or they'll see something different in you and they'll ask you questions. Right? So this adopting spirit, this adopting spirit, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. This adopting spirit is a beautiful quality, characteristic of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. James 1 through 27, or <clears throat> 127, I'm sorry. James, the book of James, book of James. James. <clears throat> ah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Book of James. And I thought I had it bookmarked. Book of James. Book of James. Here we go. Man, I forgot that bookmark. <laughs> Slow down, Kevin, when you prepare. Hallelujah. James, chapter 1, verse 27. James, chapter 1, verse 27. Now, again, we're talking about... God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. Now, when we talk about a religious spirit, make no mistake, this religious spirit is talking about hypocrisy. But God is saying, if you want to be about religion, this is what true religion is. 
to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. You know, the word teaches us to learn to love others. Sometimes we had trouble in the beginning of our walk with Jesus to love others. But religion in this context, God is saying, love the widow, love the orphan, especially in time of distress. When you don't have, it's natural order. It is natural order that a, a man and wife would cleave to one another, leave the family, and become one flesh. It's natural order that as they start to develop and grow as a family, everyone has their respective place. The woman is the rib of the man. I'm not over my wife and she's not over. Yes, I'm the head of my house because the word says so. But that's because I'm the priestly figure. I am the one who has the spiritual authority over my household. But that's being in my place. I don't control my body. The word of God says I surrender mine to her. My wife has her roles. And when she's in the hospital, let me tell you something, just from a real for real uh, detail here. When she's in the hospital, mom, you know how this goes. There's more work that has to be done that has to come from some worker bee somewhere. We start to distribute that. And I'll tell you what, you feel the weight. You feel the weight when it's out of balance. The order is natural for the proper balance with your kids and everything. And when anything out of that situation is out of order, it can cause stress. So especially when we discern someone in stress, sometimes people don't need to hear a bunch of, you know, scriptures thrown at them. They just need you to cry with them. They need you to ask them if they need help with laundry or something. Hello, somebody. Sometimes they're, they're going through a situation. But this is the adopting spirit that we're willing to give. We're willing to take in, right? Those who don't even, you know, are not even our maternal sons and daughters or nephews and nieces and so forth. This is a beautiful characteristic, right? And as we learn here in James, that's, that's true religion. If you want to call, you know, we like to call love a movement. It moves it, and, it, and, it, and it reciprocates. And that means that as love goes out, as you sow love, as you give love, love returns back to you. Amen. That's a good quality. Hallelujah. That's a very good quality. You know the adage that goes, right? You reap what you sow. Sow good, return good. <laughs> and when you happen to be persecuted and hated on, Take it for the Lord. Jesus says, even my disciples, you will be martyred. You will be misjudged. You will be treated on the account of me. But take heart, I've overcome the world. That means have cheer. Be, take those inflictions with glory, knowing that as you take it, you're doing it for the high king. And you're, you're, we're going to talk about crown next time we'll come. But your crown will be waiting for you in heaven. Amen. Because we do it for the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the adopting characteristic of this bird that I learned from. They're adopting. Hallelujah. And number eight, last one here today, as we get ready to close out, is vigilance. Vigilance, right? Paying attention. Know at all times what's going on, especially in your household. Just like today, this altar call. Faith. So that when we see it, in the name of Jesus, right? We got to be. What it is. That's why the gift of the Holy Spirit. Discerning of spirits. Knowing. An evil spirit from a good spirit. 
All good things come from heaven, but all evil comes from hello. So, so we got to understand, see evil when it presents itself. We got to understand it. God will develop this. So this this quail is very vigilant, right? It knows when trouble's lurking, and that's why it it stays still because it's constantly. I mean, you make a move. It's, I've been blessed as a kid to see the the things that I've seen as a child. I, I don't go under trees anymore like I used to as a child. <laughs> I'm afraid that a scorpion or something going to poke me, you know, sting me, you know. But as a child, I had that. <laughs> I was fearless like that. Oh, I sit down and and then I, I've seen some beautiful things under under these bushes. Amen. Amen. But but this bird, if you're out there and you try, they're so difficult to hunt. <laughs> they're difficult to hunt because they're vigilant. They're constantly seeing what's moving. They understand its environment. And they're, they 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 move accordingly. They move when they can, when it's safe to, right? But for us as the body of Christ, we got to be vigilant. Jesus saw right into the hearts of men and women because he discerned. Vigilance and discernment, they go hand in hand. They, he understood when the, when even in the spirit, you are, the more you're going to spot out evil when it tries to come. You may even know that it's coming beforehand. Amen? I didn't know what we were going to be dealing with this week. But in my spirit was impressed upon me, you're going to go through this period of fasting because there's a spiritual need. I did not under, but because I don't, I've learned to crucify my flesh. <coughs> I've learned to crucify, you know, being so, uh, so led by the visual, the physical realm. <clears throat> we don't walk by sight anymore, but by faith. Amen. Faith is spiritual. So because we've learned that, we can be sensitive to the spirit realm so that when the call comes, and it can come from any direction, thank you, Holy Spirit, it can come from any direction. But God wants to bring a blessing. He wants to, he wants to flow his anointing so that, that people would be released of, of bondages. He's, he's got to use vessels too. We got to be willing to glorify the king. That's why we're now living sacrifices. Amen. But we must be vigilant in the physical and spiritual. These two, when you discern, Jesus says, you will know by the fruit. You will know the character of a man. Not because what denomination of Christianity you claim, whether you're a Pentecostal, Right? Whether you're non-denominational or just like me, I say I'm just a Bible thumping Jesus lover. That's my denomination is love. <laughs> I don't claim all those things, but I believe in the Spirit. I, I have a I have Pentecost rain into my house every day. I feel the Spirit of the Lord. We have revival in our home in our own house before we come to you know a gathering like this. We're already doing all that. So yeah, I believe in all these moves of the Holy Spirit and all that. Yes. We have Pentecost every day. Amen. See, God heal on, on occasion. But it's his glory. Amen. We give him the praise. But we got to be vigilant so that we understand. We don't grieve. We don't shut up the Holy Spirit. We entertain him. Say that with me. We entertain the Holy Spirit. We entertain the Holy Spirit. We entertain him. We don't, we don't discourage him. We don't push him away. We don't sin arrogantly, knowingly, just sin against him and push him away because then we start to lose the vigilance, the spirit of the Lord. He's just saying, just put it under the blood again. My grace is sufficient. It'll cover you again. It is only by his grace that we get stronger in the things of him. It's only by his grace. He told his disciples that.
And we can't enter the kingdom of heaven unless we learn this value of learning to forgive others. Because if we want the Father in heaven to forgive us, we got to forgive others. Have to. <laughs> so let us be vigilant. Let us be discerning. No. No. At all times. What's lurking? When it's good. When it's bad manifesting. So that we can properly respond to bring protection for our families. God desires that for us. He says, there's going a day that I go to be with the Father, and I'm going to send you my comforter, my counselor, my teacher, and reminder. How many times we forget something, and, and just out of nowhere, especially if you're like me, Lord, bring that thought back, please. I just lost my thought right now, and he'll bring it back. He says, I will remind you. We're fallible. We're going to forget something. But guess who brings that thought back? Right? Holy Spirit, the Great Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. As we close out, we're going to go to the book of Psalm. Psalms again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to go uh, to chapter 139. Hallelujah. 139. <clears throat> and we're going to read from 1 through 10. Again, vigilance, vigilance. Discerning, discerning. 139. Chapter 139, verses 1 through 10. And the word of the Lord reads, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. <laughs> you know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts. You hem me in the behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. This is our God, all-knowing, vigilant. Amen. Where can I go from your spirit? <laughs> Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. <laughs> Listen. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Hallelujah. Our God is all-knowing. He has the greatest character of this vigilance, but for you and I, he, just like the sensitivity in the quail, he wants to give us that spiritual sensitivity too. Amen. The gift of discerning spirits. Understanding that even as you develop in that gift, you will know what type of spirit it is. What type of spirit is good. What type of spirit is bad. And you will know that, that protection is when you cast the wrong out, the evil out. It must flee. A believing heart, that's all it takes. Believing in that what you speak in that name that it will flee. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's go ahead and give God a great hand clap of praise. He's been good. He's been good. He was shut up in my bones today, man. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't stop praising him. I was just feeling this. I saw the manifestation of this vision of the altar. I just, I just knew his glory was just going to be, you know, released. And, and, and that, that he's equipping us, right? He's equipping us to battle in the spirit, to warfare in the spirit. And I believe that, like I said earlier, this, this manifestation is stirring up. The kingdom of darkness is stirred up right now. But we in the kingdom of the light stand strong together. And wherever we are in the darkness, we let our light. forward to that. Amen. <laughs> um, next Sunday we'll be traveling so we will um, we won't have services next week but we will continue as normal the following one. And I'm going to request you know since everything went well these this this first month I'm going to try to book July. And whether we're in here 
on the porch or in that rec center, we're going to lay the altar wherever we are yeah. to get the word. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, uh, but just to let everybody know, uh, next week we'll be traveling. Keep us in prayer, please, uh, for traveling mercies. Um, and and, and uh, I would really, really appreciate that. Hallelujah. Well, why don't we go ahead and stand to our feet. Pray out. Uh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We glory. We glory. We bring you glory, Father. Glory, glory, glory. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that, Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet. Everything in the physical is going to pass away one day, but your word, oh God, shall stand forever. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you're teaching us about your godly characteristics. That, Lord, we want to be more like you and less like the character represented in the world that is evil. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you give us tools. You give us the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that we can be vigilant. So that we can see into the darkness, oh God. But, but cast it out in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we continue to pray. We continue to pray for your release of your Shekinah glory throughout the Yavapai Apache Nation and its leaders, oh God, and all the families represented, the first uh, responders, etc. Lord, we pray that even though we know that the demonic realm is stirred and it's scurrying and it's, it's moving, Lord, let us stay strong and mounted on the rock of salvation, hallelujah, the rock of ages, hallelujah, the ancient of days amen hallelujah so lord we just ask you lord to seal all the teaching of your characteristics and this demonic realm that we can we can cast out in jesus mighty name out of our homes out of our loved ones homes seal it with your love the teaching and your authority of the kingdom oh lord may your word constantly be our portion may your word may we thirst for your word more than than, than physical water, oh God, that our body needs. May, may we hunger for your word more than food for our bodies, oh God. Here today we just thank you. We thank you for the blessing over the children and their teaching here today and their activities. Lord, as we get ready to eat, we just pray that you bless the food here and bless the hands of those who made it. It took it took time. <laughs> Lord, we appreciate that. It takes time, and but Lord, when we come together and, and we fellowship, it's just such a glorious thing. That, Lord, we're about the togetherness as the quail are too. And that's what we represent here, Lord, is, is loving people that want to see a community uh, better. We want to see a community uh, be blessed with generational blessings and, and severing, severing generational curses, Lord. So here today, we are careful, Lord, to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's set up some tables. Online viewers, it's your pastor, uh, brother Kevin Quayle, child Rodriguez here, living on the Rock Ministries. And until next time, God bless you. We love you.